and what is up YouTube welcome back to the channel welcome back to the garage as always it's been a while since I posted a video but been real busy but today we are actually going to start on some new mods actually for my daily driver the little orange Charmander the Chevy Sonic out there which if you guys don't know and you guys haven't seen my videos yet it is a six-speed stick shift manual those cars their gear shift the OEM gear shift is notorious for falling apart and falling into pieces but today we're going to remedy that situation with the ZZP ZZ Performance short throw shifter jump right into the install and we're going to start with the parts list so ZZP provides you with the whole installation for the short throw shifter in here I have two other parts that coincide with the short throw shifter one are the shifter bushings and then two is the shifter cable clamp I'll put a link down below to all these parts on their website as well as all the other tools and stuff that I will use for today's install and some of these will be affiliated links so if you do purchase from my link I do receive a commission and I do say thank you guys what it says you'll need is a 10 millimeter socket and extensions got my socket set got extensions uh, wrenches, screwdrivers. We need a hammer, pliers, snips, and then we need some small zip ties. Got some zip ties, trim removal tool. I got both my metal trim removal tool as well as a plastic one and white lithium grease. Got some spray, white lithium grease, and a sharpie. We're going to be marking some stuff up to make sure we put it back the correct way. So there's your sharpie. With that, let's jump right in the car and let's get going on this install. Alright guys, so now that we're in the car, we're going to jump right into it. So first things first, you want to pull your e-brake up, get that up out the way, and make sure your car won't move if you're on the slightest hill. And then you're going to use one of your trim tools, which my gear shift boot is not really hung on there at all. So you're going to need to use a trim tool, and you're going to pull up on this guy here. And once you guys have this up and out the way, you're going to need to remove this whole larger center trim. And you should be able to kind of pull up on it just like that. Like I said, mine's not held on there very tight at all. So we'll take this, move this out the way. Once you have that out the way, you're gonna need to cut the zip tie off of the bottom of the shift boot. Not too sure if you guys can see that, but there's a little zip tie holding on to the boot down there. So use your snips and cut that. Next up, the directions say they want us to put it into fourth gear. So we'll pull it back into fourth gear and we're gonna make our way down here in the front. Um, there's this little padding around the bottom. I'm gonna need two hands to do it. So I'm going to do it real quick and I'll show you what it looks like. Here's what it kind of looks like and what I actually did was I used the pry bar to get down in there and it kind of just like fidget itself up and I only tore it just a little bit right here but this is just a little insulator so that's not a big deal. Now directions say we actually should put it into fourth gear which is the center position straight down. We're going to be looking down there at the bottom. We're going to need to use our sharpie at this point so hopefully you guys can see that. Now that we got it in fourth gear, we need to mark those shifter cable positions with our Sharpie. Specifically, what you're gonna be marking is down here. You're gonna mark right here in front of this shifter cable clamp, and then over here on the left side, right down there, hopefully you can see, you're gonna be marking that guy as well. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove those cables from the actual connections, I guess you'd say. You have these little clamps down here you need to pry these tabs up and off and that's how you'll get it. So here's one of the little yellow ones down here. See if I can do this with one hand. Probably gonna be a little, little difficult. Yeah, can't do it with one hand. So let me try it using my little pry bar tool. I got those tabs, which are these yellow things, pulled up. They don't come all the way off, but as you can see, it's no longer attached to the cable. The gear shift no longer affects the shifter cable movement. So how I had to do it was I actually had to grab both of my pry bars. I stuck the shorter pry bar on the back side. I stuck the long one on the front. And essentially I had the long one on the front, kind of like that. And then at the same time, I had the shorter one on the back side, kind of like that. And I would use both hands to pry up at the same time and then and only then was i able to get this clamp up it wasn't super easy but when it finally popped it came up so i did that on both sides and that's how you disconnect the shifter knob from the actual cables itself and these guys here on this guy as you can see pushing it towards me or towards the driver's seat and then you'll be able to pull up on it and it disconnects 
just like that. So same thing on that side, hopefully you can see, try to make it as best as possible. Pull or push towards yourself and then pull up. And there you go. You're gonna have to disconnect or undo the four 10 millimeter bolts um, that actually hold the whole shifter assembly down to the floor. There's one over there, there's another right there, and then the last two on the back, one on the other side. So I'll show you what they look like once I get this guy undone. Alright guys, so now that I got all four bolts undone, they're, they look like this, kind of long, but they come off real easy. So now it's time to take out the whole shifter assembly, all in one piece. So you're going to kind of finagle the shifter cables themselves out of place while you're pulling up on this. I'm going to need two hands to do this, but I'll try to show you from a side profile. There we go, let's try that. There we go, back sides up. See if I can tilt it one way. It's tilting it towards me or towards the driver's seat at the moment. I can now reach this back rear bolt. Take that out. Pull the side trim. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm pulling the side trim on the driver's side. And there we go. Had to finagle it around definitely but we did get it out and here's your shifter cables so those marks is what we're lining up to later when we put this back in the car we'll make our way inside um, the rest of the stuff for this portion of the build is going to be done on a workbench so let's take this inside and let's move on we're going to turn our attention to the whole assembly and get everything going here so first things first it asks us to punch the roll pin on the shifter assembly I'm laying it down on its left side, the side that has the label on it. And over here, you'll see the big pin on the front, the side that's actually closest to the driver. Here, hopefully you guys can see, there's that roll pin that they're talking about. So I'm using a four millimeter and of course the hammer, and then we'll punch this guy out. Boom, there we go, there's your roll pin. Um, but now that we got that back roll pin out, um, next up, what it actually has us doing is removing the locking washer from the back side of the shifter. So I'm going to use my plastic one, see if I can get it with the plastic one. Mm, no, doesn't look like I can get it with the plastic one. So let me try, get me a super small flat head. Um, this guy is just literally very close to the shifter assembly and it's hard for me to get underneath it. Let me try to get this off. Fast forward through this part of me struggling and then I'll tell you what I did to get it off. Well, I got it off, but word of advice, if you're gonna pop this guy off, essentially what I did was I had to use two screwdrivers, kind of put them behind the washer and kind of tapped on it with a hammer. And well, it came off and it flung off and it flew off somewhere and I have the garage door open and I don't know where it went. I don't know if it's outside, I don't know if it's inside. And I'm about to buy a new internal tooth Starlock washer, but that's only a minor setback. Now that you got the wash out, you gotta pop this pin out. Same thing as before, use a punch, which I use Allen wrenches, and then we'll get this front pin out. All right, just like that. There's that guy on the flip side. Now this piece should be able to come off. That's part of your shifter cable assembly. So just set that aside. Next up, you're gonna take off that side spring, which it's just kind of held around this shaft there, it's snapped in with the spring pressure. So you pull this way, that guy comes off. Then we're gonna to need to remove the cable ends from underneath the shifter assembly. That piece right there, I have to pull that off. You'll just be able to pry off with the pry bar. It looks like it's just on there with the pop push in yep just like suspected now that you got that out the way you got the shifter bar out the way we're going to move on to taking off this hat assembly which is this top part right here yeah it looks like it doesn't come out without taking everything out I figured out what they meant we actually have to take out the entire metal shifter with all its attachments it's simpler than I thought there's this internal holding structure so I put a screwdriver underneath the center ball Kind of give it a slight pry up and hopefully you guys can see there. 
now that whole piece with all the attachments is coming up and out of the main assembly. So I'm gonna keep wiggling on it. There you go. Pull that aside. There's your ball assembly with all the different little attachments. All right guys, so next up, it wants us to separate the black housing around the large ball shifter. To separate it, you have to kind of pry open and push down. Sorry if I'm blocking the camera. There you go, got it off, popped off. Kind of pried it open and it popped over the ball. Once you have that out the way, wants you to take off the little white cup from the smaller ball end. So pretty much that's this little white piece here on the top. We'll take that guy off. Looks like it comes off. Ah, well, it needs a little bit of force. I'm not going to lie. Super slippy. I'm not going to lie. Probably going to put those gloves on now because I'm having trouble gripping onto it. All right, guys. So I got that little cup off. And essentially, what I had to do was I used some pliers here and it kind of grabbed on to the edge of it. And then I kind of pulled and then pried it off, kind of like that. Uh, just be gentle because this is plastic and you don't want to mess it up because you have to reuse it. And now we're actually going to have to take off the stock shift knob. Um, the actual top part here, as you can see, like I said before, the OEM ones always kind of tear up and start to disintegrate like that. They do note in there, which makes me kind of worried, is that it's going to be a bit of a battle because it's a press fit knob. Um, and we're going to have to use pretty much a lot of force to pry it off. We're probably going to destroy this in the process of removing it, but it's okay because we're not going to need this. We have our new one. I'm going to try a bunch of different things, and I will tell you what I do to get this off. Alright guys, so I got it off. Here's the spring that's in there. Here's what's left of the shift knob itself. And it wasn't easy, I'm not going to lie. So essentially what I did was I took this whole assembly, and I actually took it down to the ground over there off camera. And I use my circular saw to actually cut a groove all the way down the side of the knob itself. And then I got a large pair of pliers and I just started prying pieces off. And once I did that, pried it off, came off nice one piece. There's your spring. Take off the shift boot. I'm going to set that aside because we'll probably use that. And here's your pressed on piece. And as you can see, it's knurled, so that's probably why it was so hard to get on there. We're done with that part, so let's move on to the next. So before we move on to the next part, it wants us to get down to pretty much just the bare rod. So we're going to have to take off the little spring assembly here. Looks like it's a 3 millimeter Allen wrench. So I'll go ahead and take that off real quick. Um, the top part here, what you're going to want to do is take your wrench. I use a 17 millimeter. So I'm taking off the top screw, set that down, take off your little pivoting portion. And then now, next up, we're going to go and start to grease this. we got to grease all the pivoting points, which is these three balls here. Um, I went ahead and got to the store and grabbed some grease version rather than the spray version of the white lithium grease because that will stay on and stick better. So nonetheless, go ahead and put a generous coating of the white lithium grease on all the ball pivoting points. Now that you got all nice and greased up, next up it wants you to install that cup and the ring back on how we had it before, which goes right here on this tip, and then the black ring, which actually connects over the big ball itself. So I'll put the little white cup in there first. I actually got to push pretty hard, it feels like. So press that into place. That's actually a lot harder than I expected. I have it in place, the grease is actually holding it, so I'm just going to push down and tap it on the workbench and hopefully that goes in. There we go. Yep, as you can see, you have to push pretty hard to get it on there. And for the black ring, you can't really put it backwards because it will fit either way. Kind of spread it out and push it on. Kind of slide it from the bottom half, widen it out, push in. There we go. Hopefully you saw that because I'm not going to do that again. Made a mess on myself, but that's okay. We got that on there. Generous amounts of white lithium grease. So move on to the next part. So now what I want us to do is actually take the big bracket again, and we're gonna slide this guy back in place in the bracket. Let me change the camera angle for you. And if you remember, this guy fit just like that in there. 
the opening end of the little ring that sits around the biggest pivot ball will fit along the opening of the bracket itself. So simply you'll just drop that into place as such. Press it down. There we go. Now it's in place. Next up we're going to put on the top cap back over the top of the shifter assembly. Top cap is this piece right here which is still on your old one. So just slide that up and over off your old ship knob and slide it down onto the new one. It goes in one way just like that because those pinholes if you remember there's the big pin on one side and the small pin on the other so you can it's impossible to put it wrong so slide it all the way down put that in place we're gonna reinstall the row pins to hold everything in that position i'll start with the small one because if you remember the large one actually had some stuff on it i'll tap it back in with my hammer and then i'll go back to the allen wrench and then i'll finish it up with that it's time to put the front pin on but if you remember, there's a couple of things we got to put on and put in place before we do that. Here's that little piece, if you remember, that the big pin went through. We're going to grease up the pin just a little bit. You don't have to go crazy on the pin itself. And then you're going to get that one little, I don't know what you would call this piece, the side piece that holds the cable clamp on there. Put a little bit of grease along that little sprocketed part. Put a little bit up here on the outer edge. Remember that little spring that we had earlier? This guy right here. One thing you want to pay attention to is how this guy goes on. So it's hard to kind of show you, but essentially as you can see, the spring goes like that. Well, you got to push it all the way down past and beyond. As you can see, there's a gap on that side now. Well, once you push it down and past, it's got to go over this part of the little shift knob here. It's got to go over in between that. Kind of hard to explain, but I'll show you what I mean here in a second when I get it on. Alright guys, I got it on there. I made an absolute mess with touching all of that white lithium grease. But I got it on there. So hopefully you guys can see. But that spring, it's back there. The resting position of the spring was like this. So I had to force the spring, cross them so that it's under tension, and then slide that spring over this pin. There's a little pin back there. And essentially what that does is that provides that tension so that when you're wiggling in between neutral, it pulls it back to the center position. So as you can see, when I go to the right, pushes down, the spring pulls it back up. When I go to the left, goes up, spring pulls down, pushes it back to the middle. So that's the purpose of that spring. I push the pin all the way through. Here's the pin over on the other side. And essentially that piece that I shot off, which hopefully you guys were able to keep, I went down to the hardware store and got me some of these internal toothed um, spring nuts, or I forgot what they're called, quick nuts, quick fasteners. So here's a 5 16 version, and again, it's called the internal tooth. I'll put the link down below what I bought just so you guys can see it, because I never used these before. You slide it on there, push it on, and it holds that pin in place. So that's what I'm going to do. Push that on, and we'll move on to the next part. All right, now that I got that locking washer, whatever you want to call it, in place, it's time to put the little assembly, lockout assembly, which is what you use when you're going in and out of reverse, back onto this guy where you put that allen wrench at or the allen head screw which screws into the side of the shift knob you actually want that on the driver side of the shift knob so if you remember this guy goes into the car like this the shift cables come from the engine that way so over here off to the left side of the camera is the driver side so that opening where that screw goes goes on to the left side just like that. Go ahead and just get the Allen screw started just to hold that in place a little bit. You'll go ahead and take your spring, which is going to allow that lockout mechanism to go up and down and push back into place. Take that spring, drop it in the top, simply just like that. Then you'll take your little locking nut up top once again and just screw that down. Before we move on to the next tip, this is actually a good time to replace the shifter bushings that I also bought. Um, the links also down below the bottom of your shifter bracket or your shifter housing there's four spots where those four bolts were where this whole thing mounts up to the floor of the car and here's three of the bushings that i already taken out 
it's like a little metal collar surrounded by rubber and that absorbs a lot of the shock when you're shifting but when you want a nice crisp shift you want a firm base so the new shifter bushings they're aluminum so they're going to take the place of these guys and yeah provide you with that nice stiff filling pushed out the center collar with the screwdriver fell out the back just like that and then what i did is i take the screwdriver kind of push it on the rubber and push it through the hole and the new ones simply just drop into the holes with the lip facing down and that's what you're going to mount to make sure they firmly seat to the bottom well there you go there they are on the bottom because the new short throw shifter has slightly different geometries they're claiming that what you want to do is actually cut off the tabs these tabs right here specifically that pretty much means we're not going to be able to uh, remove this once we get it installed so i'm gonna cut a little bit of the tabs not too much of it allows us to use it in the future go make sure you're wearing eye protection probably can't see from the camera but these things are shooting off somewhere and they're shooting off pretty darn fast now that i'm looking at it i think the reasons being is because on the old shift knob here it is it had this guy positioned sideways so that the tabs are actually facing up which means that they most likely won't catch on anything well on the new shift knob if you can see in there it actually has this guy facing sideways so i'm going to take that piece push it over the ball there we go it's on there but yeah like i said the little cable clamp facing sideways so i'm guessing that's why it wanted us to cut those tabs it's actually time to head back into the car and get ready to mount this back in place we're going to go ahead and get this guy back in place um, as you would imagine your shifter cables or the connectors are going to face forward because you got to clip them in to those guys right there maneuver this back into place and get those cables up top so that you'll get ready to set them back in their grooves all right so i got the shifter back in place so now you need to maneuver it so that you can slide these guys back into their holes just like that that's the right one the black side there you go we're in so now i'm going to slide this back forward there you go just like that clip them back down there's the black side back in place there we go and now we're going to go ahead and screw these back down and i'm going to get those 10 millimeter bolts so down here back in place um, next up it's time to put these guys the little clamps those yellow clamps back in place so you're going to position the gear shift in about where fourth gear was and you're gonna line it up so as if you can see when I go left and right that left side one kind of adjusts and then when I go up and down the right side one adjusts so essentially what you're going to do is you're going to get it as close to those lines that you have marked on your cables themselves and then you're going to push down on those tabs and that will lock it into place. So I need two hands for this and I'm going to be very careful and let me do that real quick. Now that we got that in place, you're going to go ahead and try to shift into all of your gears. Uh, we don't have the shift knob on there but essentially you should be able to shift into all gears including reverse. So as you'd imagine I started in fourth. So it's in fourth, feels like we're in third, go over to the left and right, it looks like the spring works to keep it in the center position, um, so left, forward, it should be first, back out, that should be second, it should be third, it should be fourth, over to the right, it should be fifth, over to the right, Sixth. So I think we're ready to install the trims and take you for a test drive. So I'm gonna put this little sound dampener. I'm gonna force it back down in there, and then I'll show you how to put on the shift boot. That's the only part that really is gonna require some finesse and technique. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your shift boot and you're gonna pull it inside out, just like that. Now you're gonna have to get your zip tie and you're gonna have to feed it around the lid. Hopefully you guys can see. But there's this little scrunchy piece here and it's got an opening right here. 
So you're gonna feed your zip tie around that. So let me show you what it looks like when I'm done. And there we go, as you guys can see, I got that zip tie fed through. Again, this guy's inside out. We need to take that and cinch that zip tie down and around that little groove. So specifically, it's this bottom groove, the very most bottom groove. While it's inside out, and this is gonna make sense here in a second. While it's inside out, you'll flip it around, pull it down, get it to that bottom groove, and you'll cinch that guy in place in that groove. And then, you'll push it back right side out, and as you can see, it'll sit there perfect. All right, now that the zip tie's on, I'm gonna go ahead and take that bigger outer trim, slide it over, and that simply just kinda clicks into place into your dash, just like that, nothing crazy. These guys are just held in by clips. Shift boot, bring it back to the top, push down, clip it into place, just like that. Last but not least, you'll take your new shift knob, slide that guy down, spin it on, tighten it up by hand, and you guys are pretty much done there. ZZP short throw shifter in your 2012 to 2016 six speed Chevy Sonic. I'm gonna go for a test drive, make sure it works, and we're pretty much done for today. So just like that, ladies and gentlemen, you've now successfully completed your short throw, short throw shifter for your Chevy Sonic. Pretty involved project, but we got it done today. So be sure you stay tuned. The one more piece, the shifter cable clamp, which is the last part of the trifecta for shifters when it comes to ZZP and the Chevy Sonic. So be sure you guys stay tuned, get subscribed if you're not, and I'll check you guys out in the next video soon.